This is our in-studio tethering station. I'm gonna show you exactly how and why we set it up. Start with the camera and work our way down. This is a Canon 5DSR with the Canon 70-200 F2.8L IS zoom. This has always been just our favorite lens for the studio because even up close at 200 millimeters, it's a true 200 millimeters and it's the only 70-200 zoom that we found that can do that. I love being able to zoom as opposed to using a prime because I can easily zoom back for a full body shot or zoom in tight for a headshot. Notice that it's attached using uh, a collar. This allows me to quickly switch into a portrait mode just by rotating the camera like that. No need to you know, work the ball head like that. I do like a ball head. You know, I used to always hand hold the camera and nowadays I've decided I like the tripod a lot more. First, it really does make your pictures a little bit sharper, especially with a high 50 megapixel camera like that. You'll start to notice a difference. It reduces fatigue because your arms really will get tired, especially for Chelsea because she's smaller. And generally, it just makes things easier when you're using tethering because you always have to have a USB cable there. And if you're not on a tripod, then you're moving around and the cable's bound to get knocked loose and then everything kind of gets reset. So if you decide you want to go for tethering, you really do need a good tripod that works well in the studio. The ball head here is a Manfrotto ball head and it, it works well. It has a knob that allows me to adjust the tension on it so I can tighten it up enough that I can easily fluidly move it around like this when I'm shooting and then use this other knob to really lock it in place if I'm gonna walk away from it and I don't want it falling off. This is a totally optional component. This is a Manfrotto sidearm that allows you to mount a couple of heads to it and we have this because we often do side-by-side -side comparisons of cameras, but then once I started using it, I realized I really liked having the camera moved off the center axis of the tripod because normally when you wanna get really close to the camera, you're putting your body right up against the tripod. So by moving it off here, it's still very steady with this heavy tripod, but it just means my body isn't uh, over the tripod and my legs aren't getting tangled up and such. The tripod we have here is a Manfrotto 475B, a very big and heavy tripod, one of the biggest and heaviest that they make. And because I'm not carrying it around, I don't really mind. <laughs> it has a couple of features that I really like. It has this crank center column that allows me to lower it down or raise it up. This can be really important because sometimes we'll get a big guy in here. Uh, might be, you know, maybe it's an actor who's six foot three and needs headshots. And I don't want to be shooting him from underneath. If, if I'm 6'1", or Chelsea, who's 5'4", we'd be shooting them from underneath and you'll just see this like double chin. So it's very important that we be able to crank this up and get over their head height. And you'll also notice that there are a couple of apple boxes down here. This allows me to, <laughs> me or Chelsea, to crank it up and then stand on these to give us some extra height so that we're not looking up at somebody. So this is a nice big heavy tripod. Now, as we start to work our way towards the computer, we have a, this particular camera supports a USB 3 connection, and that can really be key, especially with these high megapixel cameras, because USB 3 is many times faster than USB 2. And once you start tethering, you realize the connection between the computer and the camera is key, because it can be very slow, and that can be very annoying. When you're in the flow of a shoot, you might be rattling off a couple of pictures a second, and you don't want to have to wait 10, 15, 20, 30 seconds for your stupid picture to pop up so you could check to see if it's sharp and properly exposed. And with, for example, um, high megapixel USB 2 cameras, and especially in Lightroom, which is very slow, that would get very, very annoying. And that, for that reason, we just didn't use tethering for the longest time. But now technology has kind of really caught up and allowed it to happen fast enough that it's in real time. So moving over to my desk here. First, I'll show you an alternative, a cheaper alternative. A lot of people like just a little, I just have a light stand here with a platform made by Manfrotto. And you can just put a laptop here and connect your camera right to it. If you already have a laptop, that works pretty well, especially if the laptop is USB 3, if it has an SSD, you can probably get the job done with it. We did that for a long time and decided we wanted a bigger, more permanent screen, a computer that could be a little bit faster, and you can get fast laptops, but fast desktop, desktop computers tend to be faster and you get more bang for your buck. The monitor here is a 4K monitor, so it's an extremely high resolution monitor, and that allows me to more easily spot 
detail problems, for example, if I slightly missed focus, I would not notice on the back of the camera here without really laboriously having to zoom in. But here I can see it much more obviously. It enables me to show a histogram over to the left and in fact, it will automatically detect overexposure. Like if I zoom in on her skin here, I can see these red dots are showing that. Some of the highlights on her skin are very slightly blown out. And that's, that actually, to me, that means a pretty perfect exposure. So I'm happy with that. But it's information that I need in the course of the shoot that lets me know the exposure is perfect. Because the last thing you want is to do a shoot for a client and shake their hand and send them on their way and then get back to the computer and realize that you weren't using a high enough f-stop and there's not enough depth of field. Or all of your pictures are a little bit overexposed or a little bit underexposed. And these are things you might not notice on the back of the camera, you really might not. So the computer here is a safeguard. <laughs> it helps me realize my mistakes before it's too late. And that's the, the biggest purpose of it. There are other benefits to it. It's constantly copying pictures from the camera to the computer. So now I can easily transfer them to the desk where I work and edit them uh, immediately. So there's, I don't have to wait for this to uh, copy from my camera to my computer at my desk and then render the previews. In fact, I have a synchronization process running here that's constantly copying the pictures from this computer to my workstation at my desk so that they're already ready when I go downstairs. This particular rolling kiosk has been really useful to us. You can see that it has the ability to tilt both the monitor and keyboard separately. And for the way we work, this has been really important because I can easily flip the screen around and show the model the pictures that are coming up. So it's also important that I be able to hide it <laughs> because I don't generally want the model to be able to see their own pictures. So with the flip this way, I can browse through, select a picture that I think is good enough that they can see it and not have their self-esteem crushed <laughs> and then flip it around. And I can say, I can point to it and say, you know, you're not smiling with your eyes. If you tilt your chin back, see how much better the light is there. Provide them any feedback that I want. The ability to rotate the entire thing and the keyboard means I can position it. And if I move up or down or side to side, this can go with me. As many things as possible are wireless in this configuration. So the mouse, which is a Logitech Performance MX mouse, is wireless and it has a laser pointer on it so that it, it works very quickly and accurately. I like this mouse in particular because the wheel scrolls smoothly. And as you look at the screen, that means that I can position the cursor over the eye and zoom right in. It just means it happens very instantly. And that allows me to just check the critical focus. And actually looking at that picture, I can see this particular eye is not sharp. This eye is sharp, but that's maybe not exactly what I want. And that might lead me to, for example, choose a higher f-stop. The software we're using here is Capture One Pro. And that might surprise you if you know a little bit about me because I've written a couple of books about Adobe Lightroom and we do like Adobe Lightroom. Capture One does most of the same stuff as Adobe Lightroom, but in the studio for tethering, it's much, much faster. So you could tether with Lightroom or Capture One and they cost about the same on a monthly basis, but Capture One is several times faster especially with the 5DSR, Lightroom was taking five, 10 seconds more sometimes to actually show me a picture that I could zoom in on. Whereas Capture One manages to get it done much, much faster. It's just better written software. So we still use Lightroom at our actual editing stations for organizing and editing the photos. But for capturing, for looking at the pictures in the process of the shoot, Capture One is definitely the way to go. We've been very happy with it several times faster. And with Lightroom, I, this would have been a no-go. It was just too slow to work with. So let's crouch down and take a look at the computer that I decided to use here. So I'll just spin this around, unplug my camera so it doesn't get tangled up. This is an Alienware X51. And I chose this because it has an i7-4790K processor in it. So if you watch my video about making a desktop PC, you'll see that in my main editing workstation, I chose a different processor. I chose a processor with more cores, but a slower overall speed. And because this is not doing video editing, because this is doing photo editing only, the 4790K is currently the fastest processor you can get for that type of work. I think it only has four cores, but the, the speed of four gigahertz makes the overall performance better. 
Uh, I have an SSD here that I have yet to install. <laughs> I just wanted a small SSD. We only store photos from one session at a time here, so 120 gigs is just fine. You can't actually cram two drives into this, so it works pretty well. I like this particular computer because it has a graphics card that's capable of driving this 4K monitor. That's something important to check on. The graphics performance isn't going to really benefit your day-to-day -day use, but of course, if you're using a high-res monitor, you'll need something that can drive it. You also want to make sure that you get USB 3 connections because your USB 3 uh, camera will be much faster. Not that most, most computers accept it. I decided to upgrade my wireless access point to 802.11ac and include an 802.11ac wireless adapter here because that link ended up being many times faster than the old 802.11g network I had. I would rather have had wired ethernet, but there's just no way for me to get from my computers downstairs all the way up here. So that was the fastest wireless connection that I could possibly make. And you know, these files can be 50 megabytes each. We can end up with many gigs of files in a given shoot. So transferring those back and forth uh, it, with my old 802.11g network would take hours. With the new network, it works out much, much faster. So I hope this video has been useful to you. Give us a subscribe to watch more free videos. Give us a like and share with your friends. And if you end up getting any of this gear using the links in the video will help support us. Thanks so much.